Modern media has opened up perfect opportunities for brands to pay famous people to endorse their products. Some brands and celebrities are tailor-made for each other. Think Nike and Michael Jordan, or Pepsi and Beyonce. Others, however, have not quite had the same connection. Here are the top 20 most ridiculous brand endorsements and sponsorships that actually happened. Amazing! Number 20. Cycling teams. Because cycling races like the Tour de France take up over a month of TV time, many companies like to put their brands on the shirts of cycling teams. It doesn't matter if your brand has no connection to cycling at all. Brands that have emblazoned their logos on bike riders include Phonak Hearing Aids, Boiler Dior Cigarettes, and Spinaza Group Concrete Posts. The irony of elite cyclists being sponsored by a lung-destroying company is real. Elsewhere, a Belgian team got sponsored by a snoring remedy and the National Lottery Company, giving the world the Silence Lotto Cycling Team. Number 19. John Lydon and Ozzy Osbourne Back in the 1970s, British rockers Johnny Rotten and Ozzy Osbourne were two of the most dangerous men on the planet. As well as pioneering punk music, Johnny and his band, the Sex Pistols, were famous for swearing on TV a lot. No debauchery was off limits for Ozzy either, although he may have peaked when he bit the head off a bat. Fast forward 30 or so years, and what are these Hellraisers up to now? Advertising dairy spreads. Ozzy appeared in an ad for I Can't Believe It's Not Butter, while Johnny Rotten, or John Lydon as he's known now, extolled the virtues of country life. Number 18. College Football Bowl games are the highlight of the US college football season, but colleges are desperate for corporate cash, meaning no brand is too ridiculous to sponsor a college bowl game. Here are some games that have been contested during bowl season. The famous Idaho Potato Bowl, the Kraft Fight Hunger Bowl, the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl, and my personal favourite, the Beef O'Brady's Bowl. Playing in these matchups are a highlight in any player's career, but I bet they won't tell people the full name of the game. Number 17. Scottish Referees. A whole different ball game now. If you've ever been to a football or soccer game in the UK, you'll know that most of the crowd spend the game questioning the eyesight of the referee. When a decision goes against your team, it's because the ref has gone blind or hasn't got his glasses on today. In 2002, Specsavers, a big British opticians, decided to capitalise on this by putting their logo on the shirts of referees in Scottish football. They also offered to give referees regular eye exams. As well as making everyone laugh, this deal was a big success, and continues to this day. I guess this one isn't so ridiculous. Number 16. Red Bull Red Bull is one of the most recognisable brands in the world. They built their brand not just on their highly caffeinated drinks, but also by sponsoring some pretty outlandish stuff. These events include the Flugtag, where people make homemade aeroplanes and jump off tall piers. There's also Red Bull cliff diving, which is as scary as it sounds. Perhaps their most famous project though, was when Red Bull sent Felix Bormengarter into space in a helium balloon. Felix jumped back to Earth, breaking the sound barrier on his way. I guess the lesson is, Red Bull does indeed give you wings. Number 15, Mikhail Gorbachev. He was the leader of the Soviet Union. He helped end the Cold War and won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1990. Another achievement in his career was appearing in this ad for Pizza Hut where he stars with his granddaughter. It carried the message that whatever your political views are, you can still enjoy a delicious pizza. It's also pretty funny. Gorbachev gave his fee for the ad to charity, so all in all, it's a good thing. Number 14, NASCAR. When people will watch cars going around a circular track for four hours on TV, you've got yourself a sponsorship opportunity. However, not all NASCAR sponsors reflect the sportman's man image. Viagra, Barack Obama's presidential campaign, Kim Kardashian, and the Passion of the Christ movie's logo have all been driven round at breakneck speeds. Here's my personal favourite though, The Muppet Show. Number 13. Oprah and Surface It seemed like a great idea on paper, connecting one of the world's most famous TV hosts and one of the biggest tech brands in the world. What could possibly go wrong when Microsoft paid Oprah to endorse their new Surface tablet? Oh, yeah. When Oprah, or whoever runs her Twitter account, tweeted out an ad for the Surface from their iPad. 
I bet that didn't go down well at Microsoft HQ. Number 12, Pele and Viagra. When Viagra came on the scene in the early 2000s, one of its first ads featured Pele, the Brazilian football legend. Pele didn't seem like a natural choice for the job, with his stilted delivery and non-existent connection with the world of pharmaceuticals. Nevertheless, his ads were talked about all over the world. In 2013, over 10 years after the campaign, a 71-year-old Pele answered the question everyone was asking. No, he doesn't need Viagra to score away from the pitch. Number 11, Tom Brady. NFL players are known for being rough and tough. Ugg boots, well, they're the opposite. They're soft, sort of like a hug for your feet. That didn't stop Uggs paying a few million bucks to Patriot quarterback Tom Brady to advertise their new men's range. He graces billboards while wearing his furry footwear, but also gets involved in publicity stunts for Ugg. Last Christmas, Tom hid three pairs of his old, sweaty Uggs around Boston for his fans to find. The Christmas before, he bought every member of his Patriots team a pair of Uggs as a gift. What a generous guy. Number 10, OJ Simpson. Actor in the hilarious Naked Gun movies, participant in the world's slowest car chase, author of a book about how he would have committed a murder that he absolutely definitely never committed. It's easy to forget that in the late 1970s, OJ Simpson was a star NFL player, beloved by all. The rental car firm Hertz knew this, and they were happy to pay OJ to advertise their brand, in a commercial that would become strangely prophetic. When OJ has to get somewhere extremely quickly, he takes the car. Number nine, Stadia. It's expensive to build a sports stadium, so teams often sell the naming rights to their new home to the highest bidder. While this does give much needed funds, it leads to some pretty funny stadium names. Here are some stadia you can visit. The Mender House Jungle in England, the Talking Stick Resort Arena in Phoenix, the Tony Macaroni Stadium in Scotland, and the amazing KFC Yum Center in Louisville, complete with an exclamation point. Number eight. Snoop Dogg. As well as selling millions of records and practically inventing his own language, faux shizzle, Snoop Dogg likes to endorse stuff. In the UK, he advertised price comparison website Money Supermarket. He recently endorsed Adidas trainers in America. Antivirus software, however? That was one nobody expected. In 2010, Snoop partnered up with Norton to tell us that hack is whack. Number seven, Justin Bieber. Another musician who is no stranger to advertising is Justin Bieber. In the early part of the decade, when he was a teen heartthrob, he couldn't get enough of those advertising dollars. When cosmetics firm OPI offered Justin $12 million to design a range of nail polishes, he didn't need much persuading. The One Less Lonely Girl nail polish range was born, selling more than 1 million bottles to believers worldwide. Number six, Hulk Hogan. North American celebrities filming ads for foreign companies, especially Japanese ones, is nothing new. The film Lost in Translation paid homage to this trend. However, there was no stranger Japanese partnership than when Hitachi paid wrestling superstar Hulk Hogan to advertise their air conditioning units. Clad in a pair of shorts and a bandana, tunelessly sang a lullaby to a toddler. Why? My Japanese isn't good enough to say. Number five, Manchester United. British football giant Manchester United likes to make things official. They have 65 official partners across the world, enabling them to make fortunes by getting their stars to appear in ads. Here are Wayne Rooney, Juan Mata, and others celebrating signing up M. Lilly as their official mattress partner. Don't they look thrilled? Amongst the other 65, United have official partners in motorbikes, office equipment, wine, noodles, and just about everything else. If you're a fan, make sure to check the list so you know what to buy. Number four, Burger King. When Burger King sponsored Getafe, the Spanish football team, they struck a whopper of a deal. They put a picture of their mascot, the Burger King himself, on the inside of the shirt. Getafe players were then told, when they scored a goal, to pull their shirts up over their heads to display the King's face. I doubt the players eat in Burger King very often. Likewise, Megan Fox. That didn't stop them making her eat at Burger King in the Transformers movie. Product placement at its finest. Number three, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was known for floating like a butterfly and stinging like a bee. His opinions on roaches? No one knows. Oh, hang on. Yes, they do. 
he made them very clear in this ad for decon roach traps in the mid 1970s. He even has his picture on the box. Other companies Ali would endorse through his life included Apple, Adidas, Gatorade and Pizza Hut. The roach traps are definitely the greatest though. Number 2. Donald Trump We just saw one world leader who went on to endorse Pizza Hut. Here's a man who endorsed Pizza Hut and then went on to become a world leader. Donald Trump was no stranger to an ad or two during his business career. Here are some companies he endorsed. McDonald's, Oreo, Visa, Serta who make mattresses, the list goes on and on. He'd probably tell you he made all of these companies great again. Number 1. The Flintstones In 1961, popular cartoon family favourites The Flintstones appeared in a TV ad for Winston cigarettes. In fact, Winston sponsored the first ever season of The Flintstones on ABC. Of course, they wouldn't be able to do that today, but 1961 was a different time. Cigarettes using children's shows to advertise on was the accepted practice, as were a number of other questionable practices. Cigarette advertising was banned on TV in the US in 1971. Now, The Flintstones put their name to vitamins. That seems like payback to me. Which examples were your favourite? Can you think of any other ridiculous celebrity endorsements? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.